chapter 11, section 10, we're starting to look at solving differential equations. And if you remember back in the differentiation chapter, chapter 9, we looked at setting up differential equations, writing differential equations, and now uh, we're finally going to look at how to actually solve some. So just to remind you, a differential equation is something that links um, a derivative, uh, which we may as well call dy by dx, right? Uh, it, it doesn't have to be a y and an x, but let's uh, let's call it a y and an x. Um, functions of y and functions of x. Um, now, I shouldn't use an f there and an f there because they can be different functions. So some functions of y, some functions of x. Now, if you've got different functions of y, you can usually collect them together and make it one function of y. Um, obviously, you can't always do that, so uh, we're simplifying a little bit here. But basically, a differential equation links these three sorts of things. Now, um, Let's think about this. When we have a linear equation, what sort of things do we get? Well, we get x terms, so we get something times x, and we get constant terms, so we get a constant, right? So a, a linear equation, we can always collect the constants together and collect the x terms together, so a linear equation is always something that looks like ax plus b equals zero, and the solutions look like x equals something or other, okay? A quadratic equation, we can always simplify it to ax plus ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and the solutions look like x equals this or x equals that. Um, a set of simultaneous equations. We've got x's and y's. Uh, we've got a function of x uh, and a function of y, and we've got another function of y and um, another function of x, and we kind of add them together or take them away or whatever we do. Um, and the solution looks like x equals this and y equals this, or x equals this and y equals this, and maybe we've got even more than two pairs of solutions. Um, the point I'm trying to make is that for different kinds of equations, we expect the solutions to look different. Okay, um, and that's nothing new. We've been we've been doing that for a long time now, having different kinds of solutions for different kinds of equations. So with a differential equation. What do we expect the solution to look like? Well, a differential equation tells us things about a function, the variable x, so the variable y, which is, which is the, the output of the function, the variable x, which is the input of the function, and the derivative of the function. It tells us how those three things are linked. So the solution to a differential equation is what function fulfills this equation. Okay, so let's, let, let's stop talking in general. Let's see the first example. If I have a function which is uh, which works in this way, if you do 1 plus x squared times the derivative of the function equals x times tan y, what function could that possibly be? Okay, that's the question that we're asking with the differential equation. Now, I've spent a long time um, explaining, <laughs> explaining that and, and not really said very much, but I think this is conceptually an important idea. A differential equation links x's, y's, and dy by dx's. And... The solution is what function follows these properties, okay? Previously, most of the equations we solved are what variable follows these rules, and then we find the variable. Sometimes there's two different variables. Sometimes there's lots of solutions. Here, we have uh, a function that we're looking for, okay? Um, <clears throat> you, you, you might be thinking I'm building up to a really complicated uh, method here, but I'm not. The actual method for solving the equations is pretty simple. Um, and uh, essentially, it's going to go like this. We have, well, I'll, I'll um, <laughs> no, let's go for the example first and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll look at the black bullet point on page 222 to just, just see how it works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the functions of y and put them over on the left hand side. Okay. Um, now, I can't just put them there anyway, anyhow, I need to have them multiplying the dy by dx. So I can't uh, have a dy by dx plus a function of y, I need to have dy by dx multiplying the functions of y, and I'm going to get all the functions of x on the right-hand side. So um, I get 1 over tan y dy by dx equals x over 1 plus x squared. Okay? Now this is what we call separating the variables. All the, variable, uh, all the things to do with y are over the left-hand side, all the things to do with x are over the right-hand side. Now this here is a function of x, and this here is a function of y. Okay? 
So in the notation on page 322, this is tan y is what, what they would call g of y, and f of y, f of x is what they call x over 1 plus x squared. Right? But that doesn't matter too much. We've separated the variables. All the y's over this side, all the x's over this side. But just remember that we've got to do that by having these things multiplying the dy by dx. They can't be adding or taking away. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to x. Now, <clears throat> you can do this... Uh, two ways. One is you can pretend that, well one way to think about this is 1 over tan y, in fact this is the way I was taught to do it, is multiply by dx. Now that doesn't make any sense, right? This is dy by dx, it's not a fraction. I can't just times by half of this notation, but let's pretend that we can. Let's pretend that that's a fraction. Okay, and um, then let's bung an integral sign in, in front of both of them because we can do the same thing on both sides. Now, of course, look, an integral sign on its own is only half a bit of notation. The notation is this bit and this bit combined. So I'm really abusing the notation here, but that works. So the integral of this with respect to y is the integral of this with respect to x. What we're really doing, um, if you're interested in, in, uh, in that, rather than just how to actually get the answers right, but what we're doing is we're integrating the left-hand side. Uh, sorry, dy by dx with respect to x. And there is a rule that says, <clears throat> um, and I talked about this rule uh, when we did integration by substitution. So if you're interested in, in a proof of this, then uh, you look back into that bit. If you're integrating a function um, of, well, in this case, it's a function of y, uh, times by dy by dx with respect to x, that is the same as integrating that function of y with respect to y. These two things are the same. Uh, if you want to change, instead of integrating with respect to y, you want to integrate with respect to x, you need to throw in a dy by dx. And there's a proof of that uh, in the integration by substitution video at the end. So you can uh, go back and find that if you want to. So what I'm really doing is I'm integrating this side with respect to x and integrating this side with respect to x. But the way to kind of remember that is pretend you're timesing by dx and then bung some integral signs in. Now, <coughs> what do we get then? So We've now got a function that we can integrate and another function that we can integrate. Now, I'm not saying that integration is going to be easy, but it is going to be possible. Um, I'm going to skip to the end for this one, though. I get sine y. If I integrate and simplify, I end up with this. Okay? Now, <clears throat> when I integrate, in fact, let's just have a look in the blue box here. When I integrate, I need to put in a constant. But I only need to put the constant in on one side, because uh, if I integrate the left-hand side, there'll be a constant. If I integrate the right-hand side, there'll be a constant. I can just throw both constants over the same side of the equation, um, and I can have a constant there. It's often helpful to do this little trick. If everything is natural logs, then change that constant c into natural log of a different constant k. So it doesn't matter what that constant is, I can write it as natural log of something. Um, so I can have natural log of that thing there. Um, and you might be thinking, oh, yeah, but hang on a minute. Natural log, we have to worry about domains and ranges. Don't worry about it. Just go with it. It will be fine, um, is the answer for all the questions that we're going to get here. <coughs> and um, then you can use the addition rule on these logs. And that's where the K crops up in here. OK. So that there is what we call the general solution. because that is all the functions which satisfy this equation. Now, there's a couple of points to make here. First of all, we like a function to be y in terms of x, and here we've got sine y in terms of x. Well, that's just the easiest way to write it. We don't want to have a sine minus 1 flying around and, and have to worry about domains and ranges again too much, so we'll, um, we'll just write it like this. So we can't always get y in terms of x as y equals, and then a formula. The second thing is, well, why is this a general solution? That looks like just one function. Well, it's not one function because of this k, this constant of integration. So um, <coughs> if for all the infinitely many different values that that k can take, this function takes different values, right? It's, it, um, it's, it's going to move it around on the x-axis. We'll get a transformation of the graph. So if we, if we let that be 1, I get sine y equals square root of 1 plus x squared. If I let that be 2, I get... Um, sine y equals 2 square root of 1 plus x squared, and, and so on. There's you know, all the different possible values of k. You get the idea. So what if I don't want the general solution? 
what if I want a particular solution? And that is what it's called, right? The general solution is, is that. If you want one solution, we call it a particular solution, and that is a, a particular piece of vocabulary, right? Um, so how do we find that? Well, all we need is one x and y coordinate that's on the curve that we want, okay? So in general, I think it's probably easiest if we just scoot back and, and do this in general. Uh, if we have a differential equation that we can solve by this method, uh, by the way, differential equations is a huge topic with all sorts of uh, big scary maths in it. We're just dipping our toe in the water and looking at the, the first method that we learn to solve differential equations. It's very easy to write down differential equations that can't be solved by this method and need all sorts of other methods. But um, the sort of equation that we're solving is called a, a separable variables differential equation. Um, and it's one that I can rearrange into this form dy by dx equals a function of x times a function of y. It doesn't have to be given to us in this form, but we need to be able to rearrange it into this form. The way that we solve it is to take the function of y and divide by it on both sides. <coughs> um, leave the function of x on the right-hand side. And then integrate both sides with respect to x, which is going to look like this, using that trick that we've just used. Integral f of x dx that is going to give us our solution, um, but we need to um, write a plus c on here, right? So when we've integrated, we'll have a constant of integration. <coughs> now, when we've integrated, what we've got is y is another function of x, so let's call it h, just because it's not the same as the f or the g function. Y is h of x, and of course that's a simplification, it might be sine y is h of x, but whatever this function looks like, as simply as we can write it, plus c. So let's say h of x looks like this. Well, h of, h of x plus 1 would look like this, h of x plus 2 would look like this, h of x minus 4 might be down here. So it's one of these functions. In order to work out what that constant is, all we need is one point on one of the functions. If you tell me the x value and the y value, then that's going to be enough to decide that it's this curve rather than any of the other curves. And of course, all you have to do is substitute the x value and the y value into the equation, find the value of the constant c, and that's the whole thing done. Um, I feel like that seems to have seems to been a very long video for what is actually a, a relatively straightforward uh, technique, but I suppose there's a bit of background to throw in there as well, isn't there? Good luck with section 10 of chapter 11. We're nearly there.